Woohoo. Nice. Oh, would you look at that? How's uh, everyone Sunday? It's been good having to talk to you guys again because I know no one else in real life has been amazing. So I feel a little bit more socially fulfilled this weekend. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm in the same boat, so nice. can't complain. Yeah. What about you, Tom, with your in real life activities? Listen, I think I would rather at this point in time, it's sad to say, but I would much rather be looking at tokens um, because, I, dude, I've just been jetting around all of fucking Melbourne catching up with, with kind of like friends of friends of friends, uh, extended family. It's It's been full on. I'm, I'm looking forward to looking at, at charts and coins again for a little bit. Nice. Yeah, nice. 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 We would to... usually have um, Z and Sticks, but unfortunately they aren't here with us today. But um, yeah. We're just it's just us again, I guess. <laughs> just, um, just us. The least famous. The, the three, the three least famous musketeers. Now oh, we're doing well. Yeah. yeah. The most poor. So, Styx is at family luncheon. Uh, Z has just uh, taken a, a temporary leave of absence. Um. Yeah. But we love him and we hope he's back soon. We love yes. him. And we we miss you, Z. Soon. Yes. Yeah. very good all right it's good to have a reputable journalist on the stream because the last one i felt like we uh maybe dribbled on about things we were unqualified <laughs> for so i like the fact that we have someone with an iq above the average of 15 on this stream today so feeling Ooh, good that is that is a high shout for this guy like, let's not get <laughs> Let's not get in over our heads. Um, <laughs> listen, I, I'm showing up in a non non professional setting to dribble on more about than I should have. So let's roll. Cool. Very good. All right. Well, let's kick it off into the intro. Welcome to Lipode. We have one L, who is myself. We have the Crypto Journal, and we have. Crypto Swiss. How's everyone? Hello, hello, hello. Yo, how are we doing? doing good, good, good. Doing good. How about you, Wynal? Um, well, I think the last 24 hours have been pretty interesting in terms mm. of like some activities on chain and in the markets. We've had the, uh, the NFT hack, which uh, seems to have drained hundreds of nfts a lot of pangus a lot of apes a lot of uh azukis and d gods and all of them shits and uh yeah um kind of funny because you know this morning uh everyone is like get on revoke cash and revoke all of your uh you know um permissions or whatever it's called Whereas like two or three days ago, we had the, the ledger hack and everyone's like, don't use revoke cash. Like, <laughs> how is this good for trying to onboard any sort of retail or regular users when like, if you're not on this shit 24 seven, like you could have everything your own rugged. Like, I don't yeah, know. it's quite insane really. Um, but what was the extent of the recent hack? Um, so I will pull up this wallet. I think this is the wallet and, um, yeah, there is something like 4,000 ETH, 4,200 ETH worth of pangus oh. here. <laughs> there is, you know, a bunch of board apes, 6,000 ETH of board apes. Um, holy fuck. Was whatever. this the NFT trader platform? Yeah. Yeah. NFT trader and flooring protocol. There was a couple of them, uh, but yeah, dude, like this, this guy's made away with a lot. Um, mm. and you know, it, it's all because people interacted with these shitty dApps and at least in this yeah. case, it was a shitty dApp and it wasn't anything major, but like, it just goes to show that like, even you know, you might have a hardware wallet and you've, you know, put your, your precious JPEGs on it. 
um, if you have interacted with some sort of DAP and have set like unlimited permissions for all or whatever, and they've written some shitty code, um, you can still get rugged. Yeah, that's not good. Mm. But um, yeah, so that that's been pretty interesting. I think like price nuked on pudgies and obviously I'm pudgy biased wow. here. Um, yeah, well, it's not too bad. Nine point seven five. It's it's pretty much back to where it was prior to the hack. But um, oh, my wallet's up. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it got bought up pretty quick. But um, yeah, still bad. Like I feel really sad for those people. Like a lot of the like NFTs that got stolen were a lot of rares. So there was a lot of um, you know, gold. You know, there five five gold pangs in there. Yeah, something like that. Like it's pretty sad, man. It's pretty sad. Is he gonna? What's the usual protocol with this sort of stuff? Like, mm. like just run them for a bounty or something, and just kind of be like, hey, I'll sell them back to you. Um, no, I think normally what they do is they go into Blur, um, and they just like nuke the bids that are there on Blur. Um that's like the easiest thing to do and like because you if if you've hacked it right you don't want to be blacklisted from some of these protocols so you want to go to wherever sure. the li liquidity is fast and quick um so i think they did that but then potentially what's happened is um the protocols you know blacklisted the wallet maybe I'm not sure um, if they even do that on blur because blur tends to be a lot yeah. more agnostic to all of that stuff but um yeah yeah, didn't uh, I saw a Zach tweet somewhere about the about the attack this morning as I was on my way to a a family luncheon. I was paying attention to the important stuff. Yep. Um, and it was like the the hacker left a note with a bunch of like pretty wild conditions. True. Let me let me scroll back see if we can get send us a link. Yeah. Button it down. Was it on Zach XBT's? Yeah, it'd be in replies, I think. It was on. It was in response to someone. I saw it real briefly when I was in the gym this morning, and I was like, "Hmm, what the fuck?" Interesting. Anyway, back to weights. Uh, so, and now I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I think I found it. Um, ah, I cool. will pull it up on screen. <laughs> so, hello everyone. I am a scavenger. First of all monkeys are safe and in the end they come back to the user the original exploiter of the vulnerability wasn't me it was him and then gives like the wallet address at first as usual i came to pick up residual garbage at first i thought i could only get token all caps but eventually <laughs> i found out i could also get nft i don't know much about nft but i looked up price uh what's the next one uh I don't know much, but I've realized that all of them are valuable okay. and I've stopped. <laughs> and I think there's a profit to be made from exploits. I don't know if the person who started it didn't realize or if he's continuing to prepare for an exploit, so I'm going to follow it up. I'm a good person. The value of these NFTs is enough for a person to live a free life, but I don't care. Um, I prefer to pick up the leftover trash. My technical skills are limited, so I can't get all the NFTs at once, and it's costing me a lot of energy and time. So, 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 so. If you want the monkey NFT back, then you need to pay me a bounty, which is what I deserve. One Bay YC equals 30 ETH. One May YC equals 6 ETH. You need to pay me 10% ETH for my work if you have a Bay YC oh with work. me. And you need to pay me 3 ETH if it's a Bay YC and end of May YC, then 3, 6 ETH whatever that is 3.6 ETH uh, afterward after you send me the reward I'll return the monkey to you with the caveat that you'll need to unauthorize the exploit contract these are the two that I know of so far right holy shit All interesting right. well very sane nice that's really that dealing with <laughs> that's really interesting that he's asking for a sum per asset that's like a lot less so he's like yeah i've got it all i know it's worth but i'll just have like 10 percent of it thanks um so he's kind of reasonable but yeah i don't know yeah i i think like it's kind of hard right because like you you you've come into a situation where if you just fully steal it like liquidate it like there's a high risk and chance that like that you might get done for some sort of crime in the future whereas like if 
you work with it and take some sort of fee and cut you could like absolve yourself of the crime still make out with a little bit of money um so i don't know uh, it it's hard to judge when you're like not the one doing it or if you're like the victim of it um but i feel like if you were able to secure something and prevent something even worse from happening then there should be some sort of reward for it but you don't know if you're going to get that reward so you need need to sort of put those rules in place um mm. it sucks either way um but i would much rather pay you know 10 percent and like lose 10 percent on on the asset hopefully get it, get it back than lose 100 percent of it and never have anything come back to me yeah and also the protocol could um effectively I don't actually know how it works from like a law perspective, but sort of just say, oh yeah, this is all part of the plan. Um, hacked us on purpose because of X, Y, Z reason. And thus we've paid the bounty. Um, and yeah, I guess that person may not see any criminal charges. I don't really know how it works, but yeah, from what you're saying, it makes a bit of sense. Yeah, for sure. But uh, I guess there was like a, a a tweet from Ansem before, um, which I think got very misinterpreted. Um, but it was basically along the lines of Ethereum smart contracts get hacked for um, millions on a bi-monthly basis and DeFi hacks total in the billions. But their claim to fame for being worth 10x more than every other blockchain is that they are more secure, quote unquote because they have 4,000 globes, no, nodes globally in some AWS instances. And then Zach chimed in and was like, there have been plenty of Solana exploits, such as Casio, blah, blah, blah. And then Ansem's like, where is Solana mentioned in this tweet? And then there's like this whole thing, like diatribe around, you know, um, you know, majority of your tweets are Solana related. But like, I think he's got a point and, and you know, there's a tweet that I made like back in like June this year where I was like, yeah, well, having my money on ETH just feels safer where having my money on Sol just feels like it's not as secure. Whereas mm -hmm. like ultimately, I think everything's got its relative amount of risk and I don't think one is more secure than the other, other than if you try and look at things like decentralization, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. I think the whole ETH is more secure thing is probably a little bit more like it's more of a bias because people use it more and that's where like most of the activity has been whereas like going forward like now that people are starting to play around in other chains again like they all come with their own risks don't get me wrong but uh, i think we're kidding ourselves if we think that there's like no risk um or like mm. the, the risks are that different between each chain I feel like yeah. it's also just like a selection bias of like if you're a hacker you're gonna go try and find vulnerabilities in eth because historically it's just been a shitload more payoff for for fucking hitting eth well as like on solana yeah just feels like a higher return if you're gonna be dicking around with it yeah uh, I, I saw something though that that the most of the projects on Solana, um, they're all closed source, so like the code isn't like as public as like the ETH ones. Mm -hmm. So like, that's kind of bad in terms of the whole decentralization and like you know reading the contract side of things. Whereas like at the same time, how can you hack it if you don't know the code? Um, so it, it's it's kind of interesting. Mm. No, that's a good point. Yeah. Hacks in general, probably just not fun for people that are affected. So, um, yeah, if you have been affected, um, not good. Yeah. I guess, like, the thing that I just worry about is, like, if this is as commonplace as it is now, like, how do we, like, you know, apart from number go up technology that we all love, but, like, if mm. this space is, like, meant to get any sort of serious adoption, like, how do we get past these things and do better um to a point where like you know grandma's not going to have to worry about getting her fucking ape rugged from her um that she's invested into in the future yeah um you know like grandma's not going to be on crypto twitter fucking 
with Zach XPT on the notifications in case something like rugs. So like, what does that mean? Like, what does the future look like? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Um, I'm going to start off by saying I've got no idea. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> hopefully you have some answers for us. Oh, Christ, I definitely do not. I'm not as, I'm not as technically, technically knowledgeable as I'd like to be. Take I it away, I feel Tom. like it, it does come down to having... Like, and again, this is not fucking adoption talk here. It's more just like I have the... I literally... <laughs> I don't know where I saw it, but it was like a year or two ago. It was a guy that talked about um, essentially having like a condom wallet that you <laughs> you interact with shit on that just has like a little bit of stuff. Um, and that's your main interaction one. And then once you've like interacted and done stuff with protocols, you literally just shift your assets to like just a one that has never interacted with anything. Yeah. Mm. I think that makes and a lot of like there. good OPSEC sense. But like... yeah. Again, do you think the average talking... user is going to be doing that? You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, it do is. you like, guys do that? Reading it, I do. Um, you do? Like with with bigger with big trades? Yeah. Like nice. with, with, with stuff that I'm like, oh, cool. Okay, I'm gonna sit on this. I'm gonna hold it. Like buying a pudgy, uh, like well, sorry, a little pudgy. Let's let's be <laughs> correct here. Um, yeah, literally, like buy it through an interaction wallet, and then stick it on like a separate one that literally has never interacted with with anything yeah i think that that's pretty good practice i wish i was as good as that and i normally start trying out to be but you know you tend to be impatient you know at times and then like the thing that you want to you know trade with like mm. if it's one of those like let's say it's your little pudgy or it's like some sort of nft or some sort of coin that you're holding big amount with you want to use it right so like and one time you might decide oh i'm going to sell it so then like you'll approve it on some platform you'll go to do it it doesn't actually sell and then later on you're like ah never mind i'm going to keep this yep. but then you've done yep. that interaction now and then like if you've forgotten that you've done that interaction six months down the line and then that protocol that you were about to sell on suddenly now gets hacked then you can get rugged so like even in like setting yourself up for success like you can still make those mistakes just from like definitely those few would there moments. be a way just from a code point of view because i know one or you got probably <laughs> i don't know but, yeah. this, but <laughs> <laughs> like what just putting this on you dude like hey man can you answer this like technical question please yeah um but I'm like, surely there'd be a way to have some sort of thing. And again, I'm not sure how it would work in practice because you're dealing with like, you know, shit that you probably want to actually keep interactions open with. Like you, you want to have an NFT listed on a platform um, for a certain price. But it, would there be some sort of way, like, I don't know, in a Rabi or a MetaMask or literally whatever wallet could be Phantom as well, where after like a month, it just revokes permissions from stuff mm. and you have to re-sign where it's just kind of like a timeout thing same way google does like password shit where it's like oh you haven't logged in in 30 days you have to do that again please yeah that's an interesting question um because i feel yeah. like yeah otherwise you're just kind of like leaving it um yeah i feel like it would be up to the protocol itself that you're dealing with um like it would have to be written in their code as part of their or, 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 or whatever because sometimes like the code packages that these um these smart contracts have like they're like the zeppelin contracts or whatever and they're like other contracts that they you know reference into the main contract and then like i think those contracts would probably need to be updated to have something like that and i think that would make a lot of sense uh i'd don't know enough about it now um but like obviously you got your like revoke.cash and and all of that but like as you could see the other day with the the ledger stuff um you know if the front end is compromised then even that could lead you to being drained um which is just mm. shit like it just makes you sort of question Real like shit. what is actually safe you know everything that we use has some sort of trust element to it and um you know i've got multiple ledgers and the other day i was like holy shit like uh i thought my assets were safe and they were but like they could have not been at the same time mm. yeah well i mean rabbi has a really and i'm again i'm not 
tooting Ravi's horn here. Um, I don't any own any of the imaginary token, but Ravi literally in the wallet you can go into approvals, and it will show you all of the things that you've approved. Yeah, yeah. Like buy asset, buy contract, and it's just like oh, okay, cool. Like yeah, I've got some from fucking Rocket Swap in here when base was a thing. <laughs> I mean, the, <laughs> it's pretty bad. All the tokens that I that I have held on to from base, like literally, we're talking like point zero one ETH gambols. But yeah, it's just that kind of thing. Where I'm like, oh, holy shit, that's right, I did that. What? Yeah, it's crazy. Like when you look back to see how much, um, you know, things you've actually interacted with over a period of time, you're like, wow, that one time that I clicked something, totally forget it, forgot about it, yep. and and yeah if i had uh you know you know interacted with something really shitty then you know potentially i've i've lost everything yeah i think like i think there's like two points that you raised um or you both raised is that like what does it look like for the new users that come on board and um at least in my experience there's always been the downside risk that everything can go to shit and the magic internet money can sort of disappear through various hacks or interacting with the wrong protocol. Um, uh, and there's been so many times where, um, like just like if now, if there's anything in my wallet, I just assume that if I haven't put it there, it's a scam. Um, <laughs> and, it, it, like if you look through your Solana wallets, there's long lists of tokens, there's NFTs, there's just all this shit that just gets sent to your address um, that are all obviously there f to sort of get your attention so you can click on it, interact with it, and then maybe have your funds drained, um, which is not good. Um, but I don't have a solution for it apart from just spreading everything out to the point where and to think like this is probably not the best, but if one of your wallets are compromised, it's not going to be the end, if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, not keeping everything in the same wallet, um, having wallets that you don't have interact with any dApps, um, all that sort of good stuff um, is always a good way to be ahead of it. But yeah, like explaining that to someone who takes their first step buys their first coin sets up their first wallet like they're gonna just be like oh cbf for this i don't really want to participate yeah, dude, um that's true. yeah like like imagine telling someone you have like a list of 100 plus wallets because you're paranoid and you're going to interact with a dap that's going to have you hacked right like they're just going to be like are you are you okay <laughs> like what do you mean you have 100 wallets um and so yeah i don't know what it looks like to be honest and it I don't blame like massive institutions for custo um, being the custodians of assets for like bigger institutional clients or all these um, apps that um, don't let like they like are the custodians of your assets on their platform if you're interacting with it and all that sort of jazz. Like I don't blame them for doing that in the event of it being hacked. So. Um, yeah, I don't know what it looks like in the future, but yeah, probably 100 plus wallets isn't the way to go. Unless you're airdrop farming, in which case, <laughs> off, you, off you go. <laughs> off you go. Um, off you I, go. I, I think, though, if you... Uh, I just sort of had a thought come to mind, but like in like the Web2 space now, you've got, you know, an email address and you log in to multiple different things like sign in with Facebook or sign in with Google or you make a new account to this new website and you give an email address and you give a password. Now, the, the equivalent in, in that world would be changing your passwords for everything that you use with because like ultimately if you, if that platform or like sort of web service that you're using gets hacked they have your email address they have your password and it's the same password that you use for your email address then the hacker therefore could get access to your email um could then potentially get access to your bank account um and do all of that stuff so i don't think it's like too dissimilar to you know what we currently have today in like the the web 2 sort of world side of things i just think there's probably just extra steps because like you're not holding any assets directly um it's just that yeah. like you if you're 
if your account gets compromised, your password gets compromised, potentially things that are assigned to it could get compromised. But then if some hacker's doing this at scale, um, they're not going to try and do this for every single email address that they've compromised. Um, so there's still a couple of steps removed from like actually getting a hold of anything of financial value, but um, it's still very similar. So uh, I, I think like the problem is kind of universal. Um, it's just that if we now have these wallets that actually have financial things tied to us, then you yeah. know someone could steal yeah. from you much quicker. It makes me think of the Wildcat Protocol shirts that Lawrence um, Function Zero wears, and it's just like crypto banking, but worse. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> at this stage, <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> that's sure. true. That's true. I, I, I think the the only like positive thing, like from like, I think that the the one point of difference because it's like finance is that like it gives mm. you a choice, right? Like at yes. the moment you. You, the only choice you have to store funds anywhere is with a bank and the bank can mm. choose to deny your transaction if you wanted to purchase something that they didn't agree with and maybe that's not such a big deal for us in like the western world but like in a world where um you know the government has a lot more oversight about what you do and don't do um with your finances that could suck mm. um and you know crypto kind of solves that a lot so people that want to have the choice it just gives them a choice definitely yeah. I, it's just like there's so many good reasons as to why you know tokens are good but i do feel like in the actual like logistics side of things still it's still just that kind of like figuring it out at scale on mass and it's getting there like if i did even in like the last 18 months the ux across stuff has gotten so way better. better way better way better like so. yeah we're, we're, we're just coping here. We're like, no, 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 trust me, guys. <laughs> it's, it's great. Holy shit. There's, there's like wallets that are better than MetaMask now? Holy fuck. Future yeah. of France. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm I, a I really like Maxi, the fact that they... But uh, not a rabbi Maxi, but... Uh, I, I am, uh, unashamedly. I like the fact that MetaMask added... Um watch ads to reduce transaction fees. No, that, was, that, was, that, was a, um... that was that was fake, dude. That was totally fake. Oh, no, I know. I was oh, just going to, oh. like, run with it. It's oh, like a okay. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <Yeah. laughs> I was like, bro, did you fall for that? <laughs> no, but, like, um, the fact that it's not, like, hard to think that they could do that in the future would be quite... I actually think um, it's a brilliant it idea. And no, like, I, like, no lie, I actually think it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> like, oh, my God, dude. If I could save gas from just having, an, like, an, I don't know, an hour of ads just playing in the background. I don't know, man. Let's do it. Yeah. Or I like... think your coin would rug in that time, though. <laughs> True. I just thought about that. Like, oh, I'll just leave it open for ages. Then I'm like, oh, yeah. And it's moved 80% from there. So <laughs> well done, me. Well, checking oh, on how much, zero. how much gas I've spent yesterday, that kind of made me sad. Oh, so. Dude. Yeah, that was pretty rough. Yeah. The fees dot WTF. Yeah. Fuck's sake. Two ETH something. Yeah, it was pretty pretty rough. Mine's point five ETH on gas. That's not not too bad. Not too bad, but it's uh, still a lot for my for my portfolio size. It is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the worst part about mine is that like the the wallet that is like the worst for it that has like one and a half ETH worth of like gas was like my first ever wallet. And back then I had like fucking nothing. So I was rugging myself completely. But that that was back when like ETH was like 4K and yeah. you know, gas was like through the roof. So I think I just wasted a lot back then for sure. Eh, you got to learn. You got to just like kind of dick around and be like, oh, actually. Yeah. Just a casual 4K in... Uh... Just a casual $4,000 donated to the Ethereum network. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Chalk that one off their taxes as a donation. Um, All right, should we speaking of, switch topic? Yeah, I was about to say, um, speaking of new users, how much do we think that the current landscape will dictate the future landscape in the coming years? For example, um, if everyone seems to think that 
Solana is the chain to use. Um, and all of the current CT users, not all of them, but like it's clearly evident or it becomes clearly evident that people transition to that chain. Does that impact the new um, retail participants that will onboard? Do you think that they'll completely ignore ETH and just come to Seoul or anything that's new and shiny um, in the coming year or so? Do you think that they will miss ETH entirely or do you think that their sort of rite of passage would be that they still explore um, BTC and ETH before going to the lower chains? Hmm. The lower chains. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts there, Tom? I've I've got some thoughts, uh, but I mean, I'll start and then and then we'll pass over yeah. to you because you probably actually have an educated opinion and not just being like, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I do just see like, if you're slightly if you're getting into crypto and you're just kind of dicking around on chain, like I, I never considered Solana an option like 18 months ago when i first started being like oh okay what's this like on-chain business and just kind of upgraded from buying on centralized exchanges and being like okay cool and i mean if you could tell me that there's and i never looked at solana as an option because there wasn't fucking anything going on there mm. yeah like uh, there was some stuff but it was it was it felt a bit like a ghost chain mm. and i was kind of like oh yeah and, and I remember thinking like, oh man, holy shit, really low fees. Fuck, this would be great if there was stuff to do on there. Like if there was mm. coins to actually bid. And I think we're seeing that now, mm. particularly like the last couple of weeks. It's like, holy shit, whether or not that lasts, that's a totally different question. Mm. But mm. let's just say you're new to crypto. You've got, I don't know, you don't want to risk more than just like a, a grand or two on chain, like max. And I mean, once you start pricing things in the native token as well, like, you know, me on ETH, I'm like, oh yeah, 0.1 ETH, whatever. And then I'm like, oh fuck, that's like 250 US dollars. Well, I mean, mm. it was a while ago, God damn it. Um, <laughs> and so it's like, I feel like once you start pricing in the, the native token of the chain you're using, you can kind of- Which everyone should do. Just Which, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, cool. And I think if you start doing that with Sol, and seeing where sole price goes but like yeah if you're just going out for some casual weekend shit coining throwing one soul i don't know it it would feel more intuitive as a new user to do that and not be yeah. paying 30 40 dollars in gas fees just to move stuff i just think fees native pricing and activity like if soul can keep having stuff to do and fun little things and with all the points being farmed everywhere i'm like i think at least for the foreseeable future soul soul keeps moving it does depend on how many people keep using soul i do think mm -hmm. that we eventually not even eventually but like quite relatively soon i reckon eth eth starts to catch a bit again uh, it's I, also um... i think you pointed out that it was inclusive maybe as an underlying yeah. like theme is that Definitely. If you don't have to spend like a dinner's worth on a transaction fee um <laughs> oh dude never make me think of a dinner's worth i'm never going to use eth again yeah but like uh... if you think about it from a new person like that's what they're going to see like they're the fresh eyes in the space right so they could be like um yeah like why would i spend a mcdonald's family burger box on this swap when i can you know do it for a fraction of the price on this chain where everyone else seems to be having fun on and, and making yeah. money i guess but yeah it's a good some good points you raised there um tom what about yourself why not i um i just put up a tweet from cat and he tweeted today eth needs a one to one thousand split um and i think that ties in pretty nicely with what tom was saying around like you know, if you're basing on the uh, the native token, then like, you know, if you're going from one soul to two soul, like you feel like, great, that's awesome. You know, but if you're going yeah. from like throwing in 0.1 ETH, you're like, oh yeah, that's nothing, but it turns out it's actually a lot. But if, you know, one ETH was, you know, or if, if ETH was, you know, did a stock split per se, and, you know, mm -hmm. suddenly, you know, it was like a higher number, you would probably be less inclined to do the things that we do on it because you know it feels like you're spending a lot more um and i think that's kind of interesting 
from that perspective. It is, but... It's entirely true because it's like I will use, yeah, I'll have ETH and I'll be like, okay, 0.1. It'll move. And I'm like, it's literally a 4X and you'll have 0.4 ETH. And I'm still like, eh, not, mm. not too bothered. And yeah, yeah, exactly. If it, if it cracks one ETH, I'm like, whoa, holy shit. Okay, now it's time to pay attention. But yeah, that, yeah. that pricing is definitely, definitely whack. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've got a little thought that I had sort of overnight when in my, in my sleep, <laughs> um, around this and uh, it was kind of like, um, I was liking like the different chains to like a restaurant. So like, let's say ETH is like the restaurant that everyone's going to. It's great. You know, they, they have amazing food. Um, everyone's going there. It's quite popular. It's all over socials. Um, you know, they, they started off at a reasonable price, but like demand over time meant, and everyone's going there meant that like they had to ra raise prices. Um, but the people that went there for a long time and, you know, had the social stuff and, you know, they, they have a little bit of money, they're quite rich. They, they continue to eat there because they think, oh, this, this is the best restaurant in town. Yeah. Um, but then, then other people that hadn't been there before because the prices went up, they're going, well, that's a little bit expensive. I can't really afford to eat there anymore. Um, now, the people that c can still afford it still think it's good because the price is, uh, like, it's expensive to, to eat there. But the food might not actually be good anymore. Um, now, mm -hmm. what, what happens yeah. when you get a new restaurant that offers, you know, some really good quality food and uh, at, a, at a decent price? Well, what happens is people start over time going, well, I don't want to eat at that other restaurant anymore. They want to go to the new restaurant that's still got good food and has a good price. And you see this like shift in dynamic where you've got the people that go to the original one because it was good and they've got memories and everything there. And they're sort of like, they can't let it go. And then this new one, yeah. eventually they decide, well, everyone's going there now. Maybe I should go. And, and, but what mm. happens over time when like, you know, that, that original restaurant doesn't do anything to change in order to, you know, get their users back or their, their customers back, should I say? And in, yeah. uh, over time people go, well, actually this restaurant is just so much better. And why did I even go to that? Why did I still continue to go there? Um, and mm -hmm. I, I think you see that in business a lot. And I think this is like a pretty key moment now in like the whole Solana versus ETH or any sort of L1 mm -hmm. versus ETH sort of uh, time because, you know, if ETH, ETH's roadmap has always been or in the last few years is all about, you know, L2s, yada, yada, yada. Um, we will eventually scale from this. We will eventually scale from this. Like when they were doing the whole proof of stake thing, it was like, this is going to be a huge upgrade, blah, blah, blah. But it didn't change anything other than the fact that we're not like boiling oceans from NFTs anymore. Um, but the fees are still the same. Like the, the, yeah. the, the chain is still as slow you know, to, to reach finality. Um, it's, it's nothing ultimately changed from a scalability point of view. Um, it's just no longer boils oceans, which, you know, great. Um, but, but the actual chain experience itself hasn't changed. And I don't think that if ETH continues its current trajectory where everyone's in this sort of like echo chamber mindset, where mm. they think ETH is the place to be because it was the place to be. If mm. they don't do anything to innovate or to try and address some of their core issues properly, then they seriously run the risk of you know, sort of being the BTC of last cycle in yeah. terms of like no one is there except for the hardcore ETH heads and then they, became, they become just as bad as the, you know, everything else is a scam Bitcoin is from from it's last the cycle. new laser eyes. Yeah, yeah. seriously. But, but it's this whole Ethereum of... alignment. You know, we have good core principles. You know, ultrasound mm. money, coordination, etc. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like. But, I mean, what do you think of the the layer two thesis? And this is like one on Swiss. Oh. I'm oh. kind of like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Like, if I look at it from like my kind of perspective, yeah, there's some DeFi stuff that I've like kind of dicked around with on Optimism. Obviously, we've got like we're literally, you know, running everything through Arbitrum right now on Sanko, but like at a, at a much larger scale, I don't know. I'm like, how do you guys see this moving forward? I I have I tweeted yesterday that like um, the layer two thing was just like dirty sharding 
it was like you know the sharding roadmap would have still kept everything i think in my limited technical knowledge would have still kept everything as part of the main chain and you wouldn't have had this like fragmentation of user experience whereas like mm. now you've got like so many l2s that like you don't even know where the fuck to go or what what the fuck they mean anymore um and they're so independent from the original network that like you could you're, you're still from a trust perspective you're still trying to trust something else like you're trusting another sequencer you're trusting you're not trusting the base yeah. chain so like yes the base chain inherits the security yada 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 but you're still trusting this like centralized sequencer somewhere um so i and, agree like i don't want to use matic i don't know what it is yeah, Ma Ma matic's like, not even an l2 yeah. it's it's a lie <laughs> matic's just its no. own chain <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just no, claim like, to yeah. be like an l2 but they're not but yeah but it's like yeah anytime i see that and use that from a ux perspective purely from like an emotional you know, consumer engagement point of view, I use like, you know, L2s and pseudo L2s and I'm just like, nah, like I, I will like actually a scam, use, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll use ETH and pay my fucking $36 in gas, which I mm. just did this morning. And like, I, I'll do that because I'm like, oh, but that's, that's what I have to do to use ETH. And, and it just doesn't feel like any of the L2s. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And like, like, if you think about it from like a UX perspective, like where does this eventually go to? Like, hey, you've got ETH on op. I've got ETH on Arbitrum. Yeah. I want to send you some ETH. Oh, fuck. Sorry. We've got to bridge it. Okay. When we bridge it, we pay all these fees. Like, okay, I may as well just send you a bank, bank transaction, you know, because it's probably going to be cheaper. Yeah. Whereas like I could send you, you know, if if we're all on solana for example if we're all on the one other base chain like mentally it's a lot easier to process whereas like with the whole eth thing it's like we're splitting everything up into more and more fragmentation and it just makes mm. it really hard um and i'm sure that's probably more of a wallet ux thing um than anything yep. else but um yeah ultimately i think like I don't like it from the point of, you know, the, if we're relying like the, the ETH foundation now is only responsible for the base, base layer. All of the L2s and everything that come of it are different teams, different incentives, different structures. Um, you know, you, there's so much more trust that you have to play on it. And it's like become this like pseudo, I don't know, um, uh, what's that, polka dot type structure where it's like your yeah, app chains and you've yeah. got this like cosmos app chains thing but it's like cosmos does a better job of the whole app chain thing because of ibc whereas like i don't know the the whole eth l2 split just I, i'm not I, i've become less inclined to like it as much as i did maybe six months ago um just as, as more as mm. i've thought about it and used the chains but um i agree. could be wrong i'm becoming much more partial to like the monolithic mm thesis mm. over time and mm. just from it, like and just think about like how people are going to use it it's like mm. if you have to bridge stuff that's another pain point and mm. that's another risk of like oh fuck i just i don't know you go to a scam bridge you go to a like i don't know it's, there's so many little extra little roadblocks there that i'm like having a monolithic chain that everyone likes that everyone uses it just seems like the thing to do um, what do you think swiss um I have a few thoughts around it. Um, I probably want to preface that I'm not technical in any sort of capacity to fully understand the flaws, weaknesses, strengths, and opportunities amongst not only ETH, but the L2s and also Cosmos and Solana and all that. Um, I think everything Wine Wall said is um, very true um, in the way that he's described um, those points. What I would say is that I don't know if from the ground up ETH was built um, the right way. And what I mean by that is that you've clearly got like two experiences that we can all sort of compare and relate to, which is your experience on Solana um, versus your experience on ETH. Um, and you as an individual can sort of walk away from that and go, oh, okay, this is what I value, this is what I don't, this is what I enjoy, this is what I hated, um, which is enough for pretty much at a surface level for you to decide um, what you feel most comfortable with um, moving forward. But what I would say is that Ethereum's Ethereum, 
um, and then people have decided to come together and try and make it a little bit better for its users. Um, whether that's an optimistic roll-up or a Arbitrum or a ZK Sync um, or something on um, ETH as its mainnet, like people have come together to try and make this happen, which is a similar um, situation with Bitcoin and people that are coming together to try and work on it. They've sort of come to the consensus that they like the underlying um, protocol, which is ETH mainnet and BTC mainnet, and they've decided that they want to try and make this work for more people and to to try and increase participation and inclusivity. Um, you could absolutely argue that the number of L2s on Ethereum are confusing or they're sharding the liquidity or I, I don't really mm. know how to word mm. it but it's like there's so many to choose from that it, you can get easily confused mm. and if you put yourself in the shoes of a new participant like that's how they would probably feel um technically i don't know if it's like the future all i know is that eth currently led the i eth sort of said okay well we can't do it on mainnet but what can we do and so it's that um, thought process of trying to make it more inclusive and increase participation as well as bring smart people into the space to try and build on it and, and make it happen. Um, like IMX, for example, um, and their gaming capacity and, and lots of others out there. Um, and they're also doing it with BTC. So BTC has currently had a massive increase in fees and the network of which I was onboarded with in terms of the theme about it was that it was a decentralized currency, peer-to-peer -peer transactions, fraction of a cent. That's what I like cut my teeth on and learning and understanding and re-watching podcasts about it. Now mm. that doesn't make sense. So now if you've got $100 worth of BTC and you want to send it to someone, half of it's going to arrive. Uh, which is a really odd concept to explain to someone now because on one hand, the increase in fees is good for the network security um, and miners become more profitable, which is which is good at like the high level, surface level. Um, but it now makes it un like almost not usable for everyday people. So what do you do? Do you just say, oh, well, Bitcoin's broken. Like we, we can't use it anymore because of the fees and we just have to move on to the next best chain that does that. Um, and compromise on other bits and pieces or do you go okay well i i think this is the future and i think we should try and make this work um and make it inclusive and increase participation on the network moving forward and so that sparks the creation of you know side chains um more centralized custodians like lightning network all this other stuff that's built around it um bob as it's called building on bitcoin um and that thought process and alone is enough um, to make me believe that people know the friction points of using the desired underlying mainnet, whether it's ETH or BTC, and they just want to try and make it work for everyone. I think with the increase in Solana currently, the, the easiest thing to do, and it's not the worst idea because it correlates with like an investment thesis, is that ETH is hard to use, Sol's easier. I'm just going to go with Sol. And you wouldn't be wrong, right? Because number go up against um, ETH, you'd be in the green, um, you're outperforming ETH, and you're on a chain that has um, better performance and more comfortable to use. And you wouldn't be wrong. Um, but it's not to say that people are coming to ETH and BTC to try and make that work for more people is wrong either. It's just, it, it becomes a harder task. And that's why I, I don't fully give up on the those chains, um, even if they're hard to use, because I believe not that the tech right now, maybe, but maybe it's just the thought process alone that people are going to try and make this work for more inclusive, uh, or make it more inclusive for more people. And I think that's a nice way to sort of look at it. But I think uh, someone was saying that like, uh, like Tether is used predominantly on Tron um, throughout yeah, like I mean, South America or something like that. You know, it's... like there's clear examples of substitute opportunity, uh, substitute chains being used out there. Um, and maybe there is a bubble where people believe that ETH is the future, but it's clearly not <laughs> because yeah. other people are using different chains. But um, I think yeah, Tron's a I, classic very example of it, dude. Because like Tron, yeah. Tron actually genuinely has a use case where it's sending stable coins, right? And like outside of our, you know, 
bubble that we, we we're in around like shit coining or whatever like people are genuinely using tron to transfer us dollars from one person to an, another person paying for shit because it's better than holding their home currency so it's like like uh, put all the justin sun shit aside you know, like they're, they're, they hackers are shorting crypto. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're genuinely, they genuinely has a use case for it. That's a real world example. Whereas, like, yeah, you know, and and potentially chains like Solano and that can can fill a similar role if if it gets adoption. Um, whereas, like, I think ETH, and I think we might have said this yesterday, but I think ETH's tried to solve for the money side of things more than the actual like smart contract you know, the, the global internet computer um, side of things, like maybe they're originally meant to have been trying to achieve um, and they've gone, all right, well, how do we, we, you know, make this token more valuable over time? And I think that's the wrong way to think about it. Um, I, I think Anatoly says something um, that's pretty cool, um, which is the, the, the smart contract money is around uh, i'll just love it see keck bonds <laughs> what is going on in this nerd zone <laughs> well, <no. laughs> um but it's like the spam yeah. resistant it's the spam it's the cost to make the chain less spam resistance uh, uh more spam resistant right so it's like the cost of the coin isn't about you know you know generating fees for the for the fucking token holders it's around what is the cost to make this chain spam resistant and then there's like a you know it's a it's a market driven price then um, whereas if you're just trying to reach this ultrasound money meme, I just don't know if that's the place to do it. Yeah. And just to sum it all up, I think just keeping an open mind and being impartial to what the users want and how it looks like in the future is probably the the way that I would sort of look at it and not get too um, comfortable with the idea of marrying a bias um, in the future. But, but I don't know, like... It's really hard. like if someone came to me and said, "Hey, like ETH or Sol, um, like a new participant," and they just said, "Oh, I'm paying fifty dollars for this chain, and I'm paying like one tenth percent on this chain," I don't think I'd be able to fully um, tell them why they should and shouldn't for each chain, and just be like, "Oh, well, what would you prefer doing? Like, do you just enjoy doing it on Sol?" Then, like, yeah, sure, go for it. But um, yeah, I think like I probably would love to talk to someone um, more closely within the L2 space for either BTC or ETH and just see what their daily challenges are, what they're trying to maximize versus compromise and um, really yeah. get a better understanding of it. Um, but it's, yeah, to sort of wrap it up, I just think that there is a chance that like you could be in a bubble of just thinking that ETH is like programmed to just go higher and the tokenomics are a lot better and that you know you can afford the transactions you want to be on that network but yeah i i think all of these as hard as it is to like navigate mentally and and get a better understanding and you feel like the cards and facts are always changing it's always good to just be like open-minded to the change um that is crypto and what is deemed valuable and what's not so yeah sorry for rambling on guys i know it was a bit long-winded uh, but um not at all. yeah no, oh, no, it's good. Cool. All right. Well, let's talk about something less nerdy then. What uh, what are we looking at in the charts? What's some of the shitters that you've been trading crypto journo? Soul shitters. Let's go. All right. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, maybe we cannot talk about this. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it's really that there is, has gone from like a couple of of okay ones that you see on the timeline that you think oh, okay cool we'll we'll catch a bid and then you go on i've been using bird eye as the as the platform to look for them but man there's just too many too many coins what's your strat what's up. your strat oh don't ask me for my strat in public it's not really <laughs> a strat um i do look at like especially with meme coins it is just looking at how early you are how much it's actually moving on social media like it's it's really not not a brilliant thesis but looking at unique holders as well i think is really really important to see that number going up um consistently and if it starts to plateau for too long and your price is moving down mm. and you've got the same number of holders on a coin and you're like oh trust me it's gonna pump it's like 
Oh, probably, probably not. So my strat's pretty, pretty basic of try and show up early. Uh, in this kind of climate, it is just like, Christ, if you can find something within the first couple of hours, congratulations. Uh, you know, pretty much anything can catch a bid at this point. Mm. But yeah, outside of purely just picking fucking early coins, I do think that at the moment I have not been looking at just essentially really anything on ETH that's short term. Because I'm like, okay, if I see things on ETH that I like long term, I'm like, okay, cool, I'll add to that. Mm. But they're in my eyes at the moment, purely my humble, not very smart opinion. There's just not much going on at all. And I think that could change rather quickly. And I think it will soon. But at the moment, it is just like, Christ, go on to Bird Eye, click the find gems button, and just start having a look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's just like you can see like Fine and again gems, but fuck. Look, it's 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 not it, it comes up with a good little um kind of set of things that you can filter tokens by it's not necessarily the fine gems button itself but it is like the charts the kind of list that it brings up with the options are really really good for for sifting through and actually looking at like market cap to time to number of unique holders total supply all the fun things but really yeah just I, looking at soul things that have, have kind of sold off harsh recently as well while bonk's been ripping and trying to look at things and think like okay what could mm -hmm. have a decent leg up again the avocado uh guac the guac the I, um, guac. i, I don't, I don't know if it. you guys are in the soylana manlets telegram the ansom one <laughs> But, I um, not. Uh, I've just thrown it up on the screen here, but like he's made this Telegram group which has like all these like sub channels in it, uh, and this one like called Microcaps. I'm not sure if it's still open for people to join. It's like ten thousand eight hundred people in, but um, yeah, it's been pretty interesting because uh, a lot of people in here like spamming shit, um, and you know, it seems like these guys are like finding the coin and then like memeing the coin into existence um i think yep. that's sort of how how whiff started as well so there's like this bit of like uh activity that happens because someone shares it if the meme's good and it's like quite memeable and you can keep you know um spamming whatever the fucking thing is going to be it uh it, it seems to do well but uh from what i've been scrolling through today it's like all just derivative of derivative so it's like Yep. bird bird with a hat or like oh. um you know like, oh. it's just like it's it's this just weird shit man there was like a k-pop graphic <laughs> equivalent of pestilence you're just like yeah. oh stop it like yeah. it's it's why isn't yeah. chat giving us any suggestions why can't chat yeah. be our um, yeah. what telegraph? should we be buying what, what should we be buying guys Drop your shills here. Um, <laughs> um, I did notice something interesting though. If you um, like, just on Soul ecosystem, um, that if you have a look at some of the better performers of the uh, tokens that are present, um, not the shitters or the meme coins or anything like that, but the ones that are more. Um, like older dexes and stuff like that. I can give you an example. If you look at Orca um, yeah, on yeah. so um, that has been going up vertical. Um, and while everything else on Sol has been going up vertical as well to some degree, um, this one seems to be doing a little bit better. And I think it's bef because it's listed on base. Um, and so I'm mm, looking at a lot of these other tokens and seeing which ones are more likely to get listed on the uh like basic uh base exchange or um nance exchange um and I, I think there is like an opportunity there to be her like not financial advice or anything like that um i, I would probably you add at... to that and i would i would throw a little different a little bit of a different perspective on that I think things like Orca and Radium, which is another one that's been doing really well um, mm. um, in the last couple of days, 
um, have been repricing because of the potential Jupiter airdrop. So the Jupiter airdrop currently, I think on Aviva was like hit 70 cents last night. Damn. Something like that. So like what that... Oh, I haven't checked. Yeah. So so oh, what, I, what I think is happening is that like with Jito, with Jupiter, you're getting like, you've got your decks, you've got your staking platform, you've got things that didn't have a token, now have a token worth pretty high FDVs, quite high FDVs and, and high circulating market caps. Whereas um, these other protocols, which are just as popular, but already had a token from last cycle or released a token much earlier, they, um, their pricing or like their market cap and or FDV is much lower. So I think there's like this like repricing effect now because like mm. shiny new token, no bag holders, this is, you know, value to X amount. The other ones are valued much lower, but uh, have similar volumes or whatever it may be. Uh, yeah. I think people are like trying to do the catch up trade and like those coins are just going through a bit of a, a, a repricing effect. Um, so I definitely I think it's a that, lot of alpha um, in buying. Yeah, I, I think that's like a good underlying um, thesis as well. It's hard to say if, like how do you reprice something to something that hasn't even been priced, if that makes sense. So like you could you could argue that dupe has been priced at some valuation and therefore just say that these are catching up, um, which you may actually be correct. Like people might be buying it for that opportunity. Um, I've just noticed that like if you look at the coins and then look at the exchange, like where's the majority of the volume and Orca stands out to me as like my minimal minute research that I did on CoinGecko <laughs> was that um, the majority of the volume for Orca was actually on base. Um, interesting. And wow. yeah, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe it's because it's listed and Is it's just base like chain or there. just Coinbase? Listed. Coinbase, yeah. yeah Coinbase. I should probably just say yeah, yeah. Coinbase and Binance, but oh, yeah. um, Even I'm just trying to be hip for the chat, you know? And I was like, what the fuck is... is you can buy Orca on base? I was like, what? <laughs> no, but Coinbase. Okay, Coinbase, okay, yeah, gotcha. yeah. yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Anyway, I just noticed that. So um, I've just gone all in dog with hat um, and then just... <laughs> oi, 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 oi. Coinbase, just... We do not say that coin around here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's banned. That's banned on this stream. Banned. Sorry. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, the other thing you'd like too is that um, I think the market cap of Orca is actually more than Jito at the moment. Um, but Jito's also got the listing for... Coinbase as well. It does. I'm not sure. I'm and it's checked. going to ten dollars. Not financial advice. Has Jito hit has Jito hit Coinbase yet? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So like I think Jito and Bonk uh and Orca maybe are some of the only sold coins, like the SPL tokens that are actually on Coinbase. Um so I, I agree with Swiss's thesis around, you know, um if Solana as a protocol does well like number go up technology like it has been. Um, and mm. then you've got like the SPL tokens that are associated with that. Then if they are getting listed on these centralized exchanges, then there's probably a bid to be had there um, because people are going to be like, what's the beta that I can buy on mm. the sex? Um, because it, it, you think about nine times out of 10 with like the retail adoption thing, most of them aren't going on chain to trade these things. They're going mm. on on yeah. a on a, you know, centralized exchange to go and purchase so if there's not many yeah. of these like spl tokens there then and if solana is doing well people are going to try and do this like you know solana adjacent token trade um and and those sort of tokens will typically get the bid after that um but yeah yeah i mean i, I don't know what you do like we've got like momentum could be stalling out and like that could just all go to shit um but if the volume increases, like you'd probably think that Coinbase may list some of these, but it's really hard to say um, what that would look like. Yeah. What do, what do you guys think about froth in the current market at the moment? There's a lot of talk about local top, uh, nuquery, you know, big nuke coming in January. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> th th this, you know, a lot of big accounts been trying to say that, you know, the dog coins pumping it's frothy this way too much shit pumping you know we're, we're due for a big nuke what do you guys think about that now yeah you want to go first tommy 
Um, yeah, I'll start by saying I think that's pathetic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> That's my man. Uh, <laughs> nah, I'm I'm genuinely just like I don't know. Maybe this is, I can, I'm no bloody analyst. I literally just write articles about crypto. I really like the industry. Um, it, I think it's fascinating, but I do think there is a lot of bear market PTSD. Um, man, I was at a christmas lunch today where i spoke to my auntie and uncle and they were talking about potentially investing in crypto and i was like yes i was like oh fuck. what okay. no no yeah i i i think that's also a it's a no but i'm also like is still, that because they, they, they know they what your job is is or, or that that is because they know what my yeah, job okay. is okay right um so they have that there is that kind of like slight selection bias on my sample mm, here mm, mm. um so I'm not, I'm really not concerned about it. I've had a couple of friends message me. I don't think that it's like, oh shit, retail's back. Time to, you know, do some fake out kind of, you know, yeah, dead cat bounce thing. I do think that, I hate to say the word macro here. Oh um, God, I'll but shoot I, but you. But I do think that, yeah. <laughs> but I do think the conditions are better and... I think the betting against this right now just feels like a bad idea. Uh, I think that there's plenty more to go. I think that, again, the ETF is seldom used kind of concern. It's a reasonable position to take. I think it's... I think things are typically sell the news when they're not sell the news. Like when, when the yep. consensus isn't sell the news. Like, um, and what I... Like if you look at like uh, ETH halving, I'm uh, not ETH halving. Sorry, ETH going to proof of stake last year. Like yeah, merge. The the, oh, the, the, no. the merge oh. the merge trade right was was quite interesting because the top happened prior to the actual event a bit about a month earlier, right? Yeah. Because um, like what merge was like September 10th ish, I think it was like it was sometime early September. I think it peaked in August like there, there was the eth merge trade which was like the thousand dollar or lows to like you know two thousand yeah, dollars that was the price yeah and then and then the the actual sell the news event happened prior to the actual event so yep i think if there was going to be a sell the news like that's what we had like a few weeks ago um if anything we would get some sort of ranging probably get like a god candle on the day um, yep. and then you get like a, a month or two of like inaction or like nothing. Um, and then people go, oh, this was the sell the news event or something to that effect. Yeah. 100%. I do think we're front running the halving at the moment. Like mm. it's, it's moving a lot quicker than, I mean, this is stuff I've very much picked up from you, Wonal. Like this is not, these are not original thoughts here. Um, but you know, my thesis has become more that the biggest like price appreciation is going to occur you know midway or well after midway through next year and there's definitely reason for plenty of reason for a pullback like we're not seeing a shitload of new inflows at all um yet so it's kind of everyone it's still in my eyes a pvp market yeah um i would agree and it, because i mean like yeah like things move <laughs> And then liquidity gets sucked up from other places and you're like, ah, Jesus Christ. Like it is not the tide that lifts all boats at the moment. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that of course there'll be a reasonable retrace post God candle on the day of an approval that is praying for an approval, which again, that is consensus, but imagine the smell if it's a rejection. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't know. I'm just thinking. I'm like, oh, you know. Like, Do, I, I don't know. I feel like I find another industry to work in. Now. I, I feel like <laughs> like Genz's like recent comments in that like po like I don't know. I don't think rejection yeah. is on the cards. No, um, no. But um, uh, Kobe actually tweeted something interesting today. Um, I might just pull it up because everyone loves Kobe. Um, mm -hmm. It was from his original tweet thread, um, which he started back in Feb, which was like, "Some of you guys are alright. Don't trade in March." Um, and then, um, <laughs> March nuked. And then, um, he's like, I'm going to tweet it every month until you get a therapist or a new hobby. And then, um, strong hedge on Twitter was like, when are we allowed nice things? And he's like, probably by September. 
<laughs> and then obviously September oh. pumped and then strong hedge was like, Lamau, you did it again. Which way now Western man? Can we have nice things for long? And he's like, I don't know, brother, probably not. And then some guy posted this morning was like, um, update, sir. So this is like, you know, a month and a bit afterwards. And he's like, I worry a little about the Goldilocks window. So the Goldilocks window, I don't know if you guys know what it is, but, um, it is generally used in terms of like the perfect time to buy a flight. Um, so like if you want to purchase international domestic flights, there is like a certain time prior to actually taking the flight that the tickets are the cheapest. And, um, the Goldilocks window for like domestics is like three to four months. And I think for internationals is like six months. So yep. I interpreted the Goldilocks window thing as being like, there is a few months prior to, you know, the actual event as being the cheapest time to buy. Um, and you know, the actual event is not the best time to buy would and my Goldilocks window has never been the ETF itself, but it's always been the halving event uh, because I think mm. like the halving event is probably the real sell the news event more so than anything else. Mm. Um, okay. Not the ETF one. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, Swiss, you want to jump in? Cause I'm like, I, I would agree. But, yeah yeah um oh, that's a good question the short answer is i don't really know to be honest um <laughs> if you the... were to speculate that's what we do right <laughs> we're here to speculate i never speculate i uh, um that's not me oh look if you've got good buys if you're happy with your entry and you don't mind like um sort of filtering out the volatility then you could probably just fucking log off for a month or two and just come back when everything's like yeah. past um you do you really want to try and um time the top and the bottom leading into bullish news and a shift in um behavioral change towards the industry in terms of an investable like asset class uh maybe maybe not i don't know it depends on what you want to try and achieve out of the market um personally i think uh like warren or what you've said i think i, I tend to agree maybe like maybe the halvings to sell the news event um or what have you you could just argue that what we've had recently is like a year early <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah um, that translated cycle maybe, maybe we just chill out for a bit for a while who knows mm. really i like it could be could be a drawn out thing maybe it just goes vertically up who really knows um i think there's always fresh information that comes onto the markets and i think um the last thing you want to be doing is trying to get lost in all like the the twitter noise um mm. and mm. maybe just trying to focus on what you feel is best and is right for you um during that period of time but yeah, i don't know i think an etf a halving and a, a bull market on the way um yeah do you really want to try and sell now buy a little lower and then try and yeah win that mm. way or mm. do you think there's like other opportunity out there because you could easily argue um that the whole year like like obviously bitcoin's gone up but it has also ranged for a period of time but in that period yeah. of time there's been plenty of opportunity out there as well mm. so um you could easily kind of just tune out that noise and just still seek um like varying degrees of risk and opportunity and just like completely not even look at the bitcoin price so um it's very hard to say it just depends on I guess the level of comfort you feel, maybe you've just bought now at 44K, um, like that meme of my shared, which I thought was quite funny. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's That's how I think about it as well. Wait and see what happens, I guess. Yeah, yeah cool. I'm partial to that, man. Because I'm like, you also got like, this year has been such a weird year in the sense that it was a total chop fest, but it was an upwards chop fest as well. Um, 
and I think that I don't like to look retro retrospectively and think like, oh, what could have been, but it's like you know, if you didn't have FTX totally wiping out, um, you know, and and essentially putting a really really <laughs> bad rap on the industry for quite some time, um, you know, I feel like pr prices could have ranged at a lot more moderate levels instead of nuking down to 15 it's like you, you the show fest could have been a lot longer and we could have been potentially a lot higher at this point but i do think that we're yeah essentially entering out of a very negative period of time for the industry and getting over that hump of being seen as as a total scam mm. um, because that's the number one question I feel with people of like, oh, isn't it a scam? It's like, mm. yeah. <laughs> like I still get that quite a lot from people who have no idea. Yeah, um, and that's fair, and that's a, there's a very good reason to think that. But is and it so, a scam yeah. because price went down, or is it a scam because of like the activity that happens within the space? Uh, activity that goes within the space, like, yeah. and and I think that people just correlate the two, and then it's like, ah, it went down really bad, and there's a bunch of shit actors. So uh, you know what? write that thing off mm. um but yeah, yeah no that's sure. my very long-winded way of saying that i do think that it's I, i'm not counting it out at all and i'm not you know i'm not a trader i'm not i'm a very <laughs> i'm not even a great investor i kind of just buy stuff and hold it and think all right cool <laughs> he's to hoping amen but brother <laughs> I, I do think that it's we are in the in the uptrend long term here yeah that's that's my final final take yeah i, I would agree with that i th I feel like ultimately like you you have to look at what is your long term ish view on it and i think that like twitter creates like this weird dichotomy of like long term and short term views because you've got a bunch of people that are like in it for the tech um you know whatever that means um you've got these this this whole trader side of ct which is like very short term price action based um and you get these like local tops and local bottoms uh, along the way um and and you've got like this investor base that like you know believes that you know it, there is this cycle type thesis um that goes on and um yeah like you, if you get shaken out along the way then you know that that'll probably happen um but you you have mm -hmm. to sort of think to yourself like where do we fit within this general timeline and like every time we've had like a halving event like the halving event hasn't immediately materialized any sort of upwards price action it's always been like a month or two after or like mul multiple months after the fact um so like i very much subscribe to the fact that like yeah the the halving is probably a sell the news but but the longer term you know late 24 early 25 period is probably you know going to be a lot higher than where we are now um so you know yep. do you want to be the person that's like staring at charts every day and worrying about like a 10 20 percent move or are you the person that thinks that hey you know ultimately we're going to be a lot higher than where we are today the tech's constantly improving you know things are constantly changing and i'm taking a overall bet on where this space is going to sit multi multiple months from now Yep. Very nicely put, Wynal. Agree. Shanks. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, cool. What else? What else has been happening? Hmm. Uh. Shit, what else has been happening? I literally love oh, it for a it's day. The cell phone. Like, the cell phone. Hey! All right. It's coming. We, we spoke a little it's bit coming. about it yesterday, but <laughs> I guess I did want to throw in something here around the cell phone. So, if you're a chain, right? Let, um, this is not going to be a Solana based discussion. This is just going to be a discussion around everything else. If you are ETH, or if you are an ETH L2, if you are AVAX, if you are. You know, any of these other change what does your thinking now shift to hardware wise after seeing what's happened with the cell phone how do you mean Wernal? 
so like the incentive structure changed very quickly with this whole bonk airdrop right <laughs> we yeah. went from selling 2500 total solana phones to uh, like from earlier in the year to like early december to suddenly selling out you know 20,000 phones in like a couple of weeks so so if if you want to incentivize people to develop apps in the uh for for a phone and all of this stuff mm. um you've now seen what solana has been able to do the the user base that you're distributing potential token drops to is a lot smaller because of um you know uh the whole twenty thousand phones thing is, is this sure. a way that you can incentivize like if does does eth now come out with a phone like yeah and, and you know have all of these like hardware based things that like people can use and then these or maybe it's not eth but maybe it's uh, arbitrum for example does arbitrum like now release a phone you know does avax now release a phone avax loves copying things that everyone else does um mm. you know do do we now suddenly <laughs> see like a uh all these shitty phones being released onto the market because of now what solana's done probably not hey like mm. If AVAX did it, man, I don't know if I could take that chain seriously anymore. Like, Dude, oh, did you see? Avalanche phone. Did you see what? Like, I tweeted about it before, but like, you know, how Solana's got Fire Dancer as their like next mm. big stage upgrade. AVAX's one is um, Firewood. Like, the fuck? No, <laughs> no, I'm serious, dude. Look at eyes. It it's fucking come up with a different name for like, goodness sake far out dude like firewood like you couldn't change it to something else like holy fuck like, yeah and also like you've got so many people coming out of the woodwork now talking about meme coins on AVAX and that like might be the meta like mm. go ahead but I don't know it sounds kind of insufferable <laughs> it, it is too <laughs> the idea of having phones for like L2s seems fucking crazy I feel like if you're going to do a phone, it would have to be an L1 and it would have to be like, I don't know, I'm thinking about an ETH phone and I'm just like, oh, like, A, it's really hard to do because it's like, you know, crypto hardware gets shat on by tech guys. Mm, like, mm. I remember Marcus Brownlee reviewed the, the Solana phone. <laughs> at, and, the honest, <laughs> at the fucking bottom. At the stone cold bottom. Like, ugh, crypto phone. It's like, nice, dude. But... I do think like they make a fucking good point like that there's nothing that exceptional about it they only sold out because there's a fucking airdrop on it the people <laughs> true, are like holy true. shit my phone is about to have more like tokens on it than the phone is worth so i'm buying it so i can sell the token yeah i wouldn't exactly call it like promising tech but I, but i do think that like that that's an interesting idea for like if you're a monolithic chain and you know you want to incentivize new users and you work with like the devs that are building on your chain and you're like hey you know i, I think that's a really cool it, it is a cool concept how that translates long term to actual users and how airdrops would be given just to, to people buying a phone it's like then you're creating your own very like walled garden kind of thing yeah but if you did have like you know a wide set of phones and it wasn't super limited because obviously mm. Solana just made 20k mm, mm. and now that's that's locked up so it's like okay that's that's the 20k first gen done gone but if you're a new chain i don't know let's just say fucking you know cosmos phone <laughs> you know and you have a shitload of them and you make them have a certain set of of, of crypto native features sure they're not going to compete with apple but let's just say you could you know potentially spin up even like a little bit of a node or just run staking from it you know internally that's more secure yeah market those kind of benefits and then offer airdrops to people who have the phones or, or, or yeah. larger, mm. larger kind of stuff that's cool that's interesting but i wouldn't call it like number one priority for a change yeah i would also argue that like i would happily take a hundred dollar nokia that just allows me to send bitcoin as like a wallet yep. for like a fraction of a cent like if someone came out and was like here's like a nokia flip phone um it's got a one megapixel camera um the buttons are larger <laughs> than your thumbnails um <laughs> but the cool thing is is that its own wallet and layer two or what have you um the mechanics in it mean that you can actually just send 
um, Bitcoin for like a fraction of a cent to and from maybe a native SegWit address or, or what have you, um, like I would buy that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it sounds so stupid, but it's like, well, they do the simple well. So yeah, fuck yeah, I'll take a Nokia. <laughs> like, you don't have I to give me like a smartphone. I don't want a Nokia flip phone. I want a 3310. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Am yeah, I but showing I my age here? <laughs> But I, I would agree. It's like, okay, I think that's more of an impetus on let's make cold wallets or like, you know, cold slash hot wallet devices better. Mm. 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 If well, anything, because at the moment, like you've got a very limited set of like of, of cold wallets. Like imagine a mobile one that has data, like, you know, actual you know, connectivity around the place that has a touch yeah. screen. Yeah. It's really good. It's yeah. still really secure. That's fucking no. ideal. No touch screen, and you have to manually type out your address on <laughs> the uh, number pad. No, and yeah, no. Nokia, Swiss, no, you're if killing you're listening, me. <laughs> Nokia, if you're listening, this is your time to shine. All right, Ledger's had all these hacks. You just come out with the most basic phone and make it the most like hardest thing to use and ship it. Um, I'll buy one. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, so I guess my take on it is more like, okay, if you did release a phone and this was probably where Solana was a few weeks ago, like, how do you get the developers to want to build apps, you know, for the, yeah. for the dApp store, like optimize it for mobile? Like you probably don't. Right. And then like, if you, uh, on any other chain at the moment, so let's say you're on ETH or, or whatever, and you want to build apps for the chain you can't because like apple's got a monopoly on the the app store google store whatever it is for android is pretty shit ass um full of scammy shit anyways and there's probably a bit of monopoly on that too uh, i don't know because i'm a uh, an iphone user but um mm. you know it, it's it's really hard to to build something that you know provides the same sort of level of experience you can get from having a hardware wallet connected to a pc and and do that well on a mobile so like i run my iphone i've got my ledger nano s or whatever it is that has the bluetooth um the one app that works really nicely with it is phantom um it actually interacts really well with it overall um but like mm. metamask doesn't interact with it as far as i know last time i tried which was like a few weeks ago it was pretty shit house um ledger mm. has an app and that can interact with it but the ledger app's pretty terrible um, so like, it's really hard to like use your hardware wallet along with your phone and you're still having to carry around like a second device, um, in order yeah. to, to do that. Whereas like, if you have like the hardware wallet, like built into the secure enclave, you know, of the device and mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it adds a lot of benefit because like nine times out of 10, most of us are not at our PCs all the time. Or if we're at work, we're on a work PC. So it's not like we can install the MetaMask extension and like shit coin <laughs> on fucking work computers like it's just not happening yep. right whereas like if you build a phone that like has all of that so you add the security layer to it and they can do all of that like i think that's pretty cool but it's like how do you get devs to want to build on your like dap store or well, yeah you know you do this sort of like incentive structure thing and and maybe that changes things a little bit um but where where i think things could go wrong is like Obviously, the Solana phone was like made for Solana, but it's not made for like ETH or, or any of these other things. So if you start flooding, you know, the market with all these different phones that are like oh, chain yeah. specific, becomes really shit. Aptos phone. You just yeah. Like oh, right. dude. Whereas like if someone, I think if there's going to be any opportunity, it's like the, the, the first mover advantage is obviously Solana, right? Solana, if, you, if you're listening to this, make your phone available to all chains <laughs> and and make yeah. it so then your device is the the device that everyone wants to have like if you do that you will win the hardware sales side of things and suddenly your your biz dev model becomes not just around the solana foundation which is completely separate quote unquote from the chain you know whatever fucking yeah. regulation security stuff they've got to go through there but it's like hey we actually make money off of this device now the chain yes it's decentralized but we make money off of this piece of hardware and and it's a decent piece of hardware um well, let's make it even better so then you know the apples and the android producers of the world like we actually become a threat because there is a user base that wants to have a mobile phone that actually wants to interact with it uh with with blockchain stuff 
Um, but that could mm. all change overnight if Apple decides to support blockchain tech, like overnight. Yeah. Imagine, like, I mean, Apple did that with, like, you know, <laughs> the amount of fintech startups that went out of business this year because Apple started doing Apple Pay. Like, th think of the number exactly. of companies. They exactly. launched their Apple credit card. They launched their, like, essentially banking services. You're a fintech startup. You're just like, fuck, okay, there goes my entire market share. Cool. Um, and again, I really, fuck, that would be such a long way off to see Apple be like, hey, you want to... You want a hardware wallet? We got you. Yeah, you it, it wouldn't wouldn't happen. <laughs> wouldn't happen. Um, but but I think I think it's necessary. Like it's a necessary thing for for the adoption point of view. My, my the only counterpoint to that would be like you know with friend tech, um, probably even with DMT this year, you've got these privy wallets now. Um, the privy wallet allows you to you know l create these apps that bypass the the app store. Um, and yeah. by bypassing the app yeah. store you you can still run and operate as if you were an app um but it just creates this like segregation and like security issues but uh it's overall probably a net positive for it mm. cool yeah agree um yeah because i the little privy app kind of stuff is cool like friend pet even marginfy the the solana um, DeFi platform has its own little privy app. Oh, I true. Like, okay. I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah, it, it sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't get it to connect to Phantom. I had to try like about fucking thirty times. But I was. I was just checking points the other day, and I was like, oh yeah. I wonder if that's if that's something I could set up on my phone. Hopefully, I haven't just compromised my. Bro, I got rugged on friend Pret so hard because my pet died. And uh, oh, shit. <laughs> two oh, of my pets died. Lost, man. <laughs> two ah. of my pets died, and I swear I was like feeding that motherfucker like every day. So I'm bitter about it, and I have all these friend pet points that like completely suck now. So once it dies, is that, that that's it? Of, I it's never, just done. I never open friend pet. So <laughs> it's it's just done. Like uh, I think they've changed something now with it, but like goddamn, uh, it was fun yeah, while it lasted great. though. Yeah, she. Um, oh, before we before we wrap up, I, I was thinking, why not? You got to tell me more. And I, like, here's a good point, place to ask. Grass points. The fuck is grass? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it, but I'm like, what, what, what am I doing here? Uh, I'm dude. doing it, but I'll ask questions later. Yeah, literally, I, you're like I, farm it. I'm like, okay, I'm farming. What is it? <laughs> wait, I just checked my grass, and I have less points than I had this morning. What the fuck? Yeah, um, same. There's something going on. It's yeah, a bit I had like I had like 10k points this morning, and now I've got like eight and a half k. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm so I'm tired, boss. <laughs> I'm tired. That's boss. how I feel about grass points. I'm tired, boss. <laughs> yeah, literally. I'm like, no, no oh. more points, please. please. I am. Um, I'm just sharing that there quickly now, but I don't know. It's like something where it like scrapes data from. Um, your internet connection uh, it's probably not really secure at all um and um yeah i don't know i'm making some some points some tokens off of it we'll see do you think nice. that, like i was more just thinking like did you have any idea of like if they're doing token like do they have a blockchain component uh, yeah no i believe like... so i believe so so i think it's like uh, some sort okay. of like ai integration thing um so like with all these like AI tokens that are coming out, which I haven't really put as much time into as I probably should, um, mm. I think this the grass, list. this grass side of things, what they're doing is like doing the data scraping thing that like most of these like Web two companies are probably already doing, but this allows you to participate and provide the service. It's like the the, the whole deep in thing, like the decentralized physical infrastructure. Um, mm thing and um yeah i don't know we'll see see what happens if i get something from yeah, it cool. cool if not i'll probably get rugged because it's probably like scraped all of my like seed addresses or something stupid but um <laughs> you know kablam. is what it yeah. is yeah cool we should save that for next pod because um I'm sure we've we've got places to be this afternoon but like yep. a, a little ai chat would be cool mm. Because yeah. I've got some theses that I wouldn't mind sharing that are a bit better than my Solana 
strat you're like oh what's your strategy tom it's like um i look at the candles and if they're green i, I buy ate. them <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like oh sick yeah yeah uh, nah cool all keen right to redeem myself on the pod shall we wrap it up then yeah i'm, good. I'm gucci all right Thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, this was uh, Brotato Capital. Um, we will upload this to YouTube for those that missed it and uh, appreciate your support. Hell yeah, six viewers on, on Sanko TV. The the market is rolling. Hopefully, we can get, remember that. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, we can get Z and sticks on again next time um, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, cool. we'll see what everyone's doing with Christmas, but I'm like, I'm probably free for a little bit on a Saturday, Sunday. Do it again. Sounds good. Maybe next Saturday, let's let's link it up. Hell yeah. All right, thanks, guys. All right, catch a chance. Take it easy, guys. See ya.